Yeah, that's probably where. Oh, I'll give it to the chair. I don't know how to. Oh yeah, I know. Give it to where it needs to go. You may have heard. I mean, I, I, I just, I'm on 54 so often, but I've, I've seen too many idiots out there. But I have to admit, sometimes I'll pick it up, I'll go ahead. But you know what? When she when she was talking about the police, not the police, the sheriff custody, oh, yeah. go in there. Well, what they did at that corner, 54, Ed Hayes, or the road, it's yeah. 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 way down there. Close to the road. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> telling you. Probably don't really know where to turn to go home anymore. That's how much it has changed up in there. I did turn once and drive through the meadows at the South Point and then discovered they hadn't finished really putting the final layer of pavement on the road. So I was going along dodging all these little man holes. It's okay. <laughs> well, look, I tell you, there is definitely going to be less to develop downtown in and south of it. Uh, one thing, you know, the last stop that was close to me is now been rezoned. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Marshall. Really? Yeah. Some of that. Uh, oh, where is it? It's on the Bookish Fest. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the one that. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yes. From, the, from the gas house? Yeah, well, not the gas house, but this is diagonal across 54 from the gas house to that commercial thing where he wanted to go. Well, and. Oh, yeah. Commercial store. Oh, yeah. Raleigh's millennial population is on the downswing and they're having issues with all those. But Durham is probably the top place. Do you see the study last week said Durham is top place? Raleigh was the top place um, six years ago. Durham Raleigh was the top Durham place for millennials six years ago. But Durham is the top place right now. Yeah, and now Raleigh's on the downswing. That's it. Because they don't, they aren't, they're not lifers like that. You know, if we moved to a town, we would, we were probably, whose microphone is it? Thank you. Thanks for your patience. We are back in action. We will move to our second zoning hearing in case of the evening. This is the 1900 Hillendale 2 case. This is case number Z170049. And we will start with the staff report. And again, if you are interested in signing up to speak during the public hearing, please sign up to my left. Um, Jacob Wiggins of the Planning Department has come to my attention that the applicant for this case uh, would like to request a continuance to the June 12th hearing. Um, so if the commission uh, would be willing, I would recommend turning it over to the applicant at this point. Great, thank you. We will welcome the applicant to speak. If you can come up to the microphone, please. Hello, I'm Jim Anthony, and you all may recall this case from about a year ago when we were trying to create a parking lot. And we took you at your word and went home and came back with a townhouse project that we've been working diligently with the neighbors to reach agreement. We have done that, but we had so many tweaks that we made to it over the last couple of weeks that now it's really a new submittal. And Jacob has made it clear that due process must be followed, and so we are asking for a continuance so that the new plan that goes with the rezoning request has all of those committed elements that we have agreed to with the neighbors. So that document will be in your hands before we meet next, and so we'll see you in two months, assuming you grant our continuance. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And, and I will say, I think on behalf of the Planning Commission, we appreciate that you are going to take the time and bring back a proposal that, that has everything in writing so we have time to deliberate as well. So the, the request is a continuance for two cycles. Are there any questions or comments before we move forward with entertaining that motion? Maybe. Um, I think I said the same thing last time with the Rollingdale. I, I noticed there's some neighbors in the audience that may want to speak to this, and I would hate they to. They agreed to it. 
Yeah, I think they did, but I want to make sure that's the case. That, that, that's a fair question. If there, if there are any neighbors who would like to speak this evening, why don't we... Uh, why don't we... Allow we have, you? We've not opened the public hearing, so I'm not sure that we... Yeah, we've got to, see if you're going to continue. Yeah, we will, we will open the public comment period. And uh, actually, why don't we bring up the sign-up sheet as well, and we can just give anyone the opportunity to speak this evening. Thank you. I'm Olivia Moore, <laughs> 2104 Dartmouth Drive. And we have worked diligently for the last couple of weeks with, with Jim, um, talking about height, um, building materials, types of construction that's there, setbacks, buffers. And he has met with us a couple of times, and we have come to an agreement we have um, development comments that he was going to present tonight that we have agreed to as the neighbors. Um, so we'd love to see it in writing. Yeah, absolutely. And we have no problem with the continuance. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. If you don't mind, we could have you sign in as well. <laughs> Marked it through when he said we'll do that. Oh, you're on here. Never mind. We've got it. We've got it. Thank you very much. I'll second that motion to continue. We, do we have a, we, we do have not a, have a motion yet. I'll make a motion to continue for two cycles. I uh, second that. I properly moved by Commissioner Ghosh and seconded by Commissioner Satterfield, but we want to hear from the staff. Yeah. Can we make that a date certain? Uh, that date certain is the June 12th planning commission hearing. June, June meeting. I will amend the, June, June 12th. Amend the motion as such. Great. And seconded as such. Mm -hmm. So the, the motion now has been properly moved and seconded for a continuance to the June 12th Planning Commission meeting. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Great. That is unanimous. Thank you. We'll see you in June. A, a reminder that the next item on the agenda has been moved to next month, the Chin Page Road case. And so that will be back next month. And the the final zoning map change this evening is the JC Electric initial case. This is case Z18 quadruple zero four A. And we'll start with the staff report. Good evening, Jacob Wiggins with the planning department. Um, I believe some of you, or maybe the majority of you, were on the commission last year. Um, when we had a request from property in Orange County um, petitioning for annexation into the city of Durham. We have a very similar case here this evening. Um, Mr. Chad Huffine is the applicant uh, representing the applicant in this case. Um, again, this is a request with an pending annexation. Um, the property is currently zoned in Orange County. This is within the city of Durham's interlocal agreement with Orange County to provide utility services. Um, the city requires an annexation petition for any new connections. The applicant is doing construction, requires water, so they petition for annexation. In order for the city to annex the property, a zoning designation must be applied. So the request before you this evening is a recommendation as to the industrial light zoning category for these two parcels of land. The subject site is highlighted in red um, in front of you. Um, the little circles you may have noticed in your, your packet, we did um, some staff photos, um, so those are referenced on attachment 2A. Um, the, the site is south of I-85, um, just north of Hillsborough Road, US 70, and straddles the Durham-Orange County line. Some of the photos, um, again, these are attachment 2 and 2A in your packet, kind of giving you a, a feel of the area. The first photo um, looks north of Orangewood Drive, which is show you. on the aerial map on your screen. Orangewood is a street in the city of Durham immediately east of the site. Um, it's a single family residential street. Um, the second photo is a kind of a industrial flex space located at the intersection of Hillsborough Road and Orangewood. Um, the third is a view further 
west into Orange County um, along Hillsborough. Picture number four um, looks at, from here, looking at the existing structure, uh, which would be annexed, um, uh, an existing industrial flex space. Um, and the, the fifth image is an image taken from Orangewood looking east um, into the, the subject site. Um, you can maybe make out a car that's parked um, and the buildings are behind the tree line. So yeah, hopefully it gives you a little bit of a sense of the, the immediate um, surrounding area. Um, in terms of zoning, um, so the, the requested district is industrial light, which is the most analogous to the Orange County designation. Um, and it is a designation that is also found um, in this area um, to wit the, some of you all may recall the Jacobs Glass site last year, um, very similar set of circumstances, um, proposing development in Orange County, but asking for annexation into the city of Durham. Uh, the future land use map, as you can see, um, given that this is um, in the interlocal agreement um, and the city of Durham does have the authority to annex properties in this area, we have already applied our future land use map designation. As you can see, the majority of this site is designated as industrial on the future land use map. There's a small little portion adjacent to I-85, which is residential. Um, the future land use map is not proposed to change through this action, um, and that is by the ordinance. The ordinance does not require an initial zoning designation such as this to necessarily adhere to the future land use map. Some IL zoning standards. Um, these are also in um, your staff report. Um, generally, you're looking at a side area of 25,000 square feet um, with appropriate um, lot widths and street yards um, to hopefully buffer the, any uses that will be found there. Um, so in summary, staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies. Um, again, this is just a request to apply a zoning designation to city standards um, and this uh, along with the associated annexation petition, will be considered by city council after this body makes a recommendation. And I'll be happy to answer any questions the council, or I'm sorry, the commission may have at this time. Thank you. We'll actually move to the public hearing, and we'll open the public hearing. We have one individual signed up to speak for the proposal, Chad Huffy. Thank you, Commissioner Busby. My name's Chad Huffine, 505 East Davis Street. So close. Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. We appreciate being seen tonight. Uh, we bring in an exciting uh, opportunity to grow the city of Durham. Uh, we're in Orange County, Orange County proper, and this is a, a case that's necessitated by the extension of water and sewer through your utility extension agreement. Um, state requires, I'll just add to what Jacob said, uh, the st state of North Carolina requires that you apply zoning to a piece of property as, as it's annexed. And so that's the, the meat and potatoes of this case tonight. I'm here, Jacob's here, to answer any specific questions that you may have for us going forward. And again, appreciate the opportunity to come in. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? If not, we will move to close the public comment hearing and open it up for any commissioners, any commissioner comments or questions. Commissioner Ghosh. Thank you, Chair Busby. Um, question for staff. A couple questions, and I apologize in advance because I'm not sure how to articulate them. Uh, so when the Jacobs Glass um, annexation came through, I don't know, last year, there was mention of some special provision in the interlocal agreement whereby maybe the city could extend utilities without the property being annexed. And I never did uh, understand that, and I wonder if you guys could provide some insight on that. Sure, Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. In the City Code of Ordinances, there are um, some potential exemptions uh -huh. for this area. It's a certain set of criteria that one has to meet, um, and it has been determined that this project requires annexation. Okay, and um, I know this annexation is being sought uh, to extend the public utilities that way. Um, you pointed to that one parcel to the south that I, I guess is Jacob's class. I didn't recognize that in, initially, but um, my, I'm wondering, those parcels in between, do they fall into this uh, agreement? Could they potentially be annexed? 
Yeah, and Jacob Wiggins again. So anything identified on our future land use map yeah. in this area is subject to the annexation agreement. Um, the applicant, it's uh, annexations are voluntary, so an applicant would have to right. petition for such. I will say that the city does already have some utilities in this area. So actually, um, Mr. Or the this site actually has an existing water connection. It's just they're requiring a second connection, which just now, triggered these annexation requirements. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all. And I'm inclined to support this application. I just had those technical questions. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Miller? So I have a bunch of questions. Um, I can't tell from the map, but it looks like I went out there uh, and went to the end of, of, of the residential street where Bird hits, mm -hmm. and the property drops down fairly dramatically. Is there a jurisdictional stream in there, and is there a stream buffer uh, required? Jacob was the planning department. I'm not aware of a... I'm not aware of a jurisdictional stream in that area. If there is one, I don't see I don't see it here on our context in, map. But if there is one, it would certainly be subject to any buffering requirements. When I look at the zoning context map that's provided in the report, I see one, but it looks like it. Mm -hmm. So if you can you see that there is a dotted line stream that runs through the yellows and then it it runs along with the black dotted line, which would mm -hmm. be the current city limit line. And then it emerges from that to the west and then rejoins it. Uh, and so, but you don't know whether or not that actually imposes a buffer requirement. No, so my apologies. I was not looking um, at the correct map. There, yes, that is a, since it's on our map, it is a regulated stream that, and there So it's going to be, be at least a 50? Uh, depending on intermittent or perennial, it could be 50 or 100 feet. Yeah, but at least a 50, yes, sir. if it's intermittent. A minimum of 50 feet, yes, sir. All right, that helps. Um, my biggest concern with this rezoning application, there's no development plan. We're proposing to put indust light industrial next to uh, a single-family residential neighborhood. And when I think that when we do that, we should have a development plan that has some fairly extraordinary or some additional protections uh, in there, and we don't have one. What is the buffer without a development plan requiring a, a, a particular kind of buffer? What is the minimum buffer that would uh, be required under the IL zoning? IL adjacent to RS20, it's probably going to be a 0.8 opacity buffer in this area. And what's the minimum width? I realize that can vary depending upon what we put in. I believe in. it's 50 feet. Let me double check on that for you. Thank you, Jacob. And I've, well, Jacob, you're probably the only one that would know this, too. Uh, I will say that I tried to look up EDE1 and EDE2 and was not very successful. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that it was my lack of skill and not Chapel Hill's lack of transparency. Um, so I'd also kind of want to know what are those zones and what goes in them? Their titles do not suggest intensities to me. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not an expert on Orange County zoning designations. Um, based on my conversations with them and my understanding of the allowable uses in the EDE districts, that it is most analogous to our industrial light district. But the, the range of uses are similar uh, between the two districts. Unusually, we have a site plan here, but it's very small detail. I mean, it's just, it's small, so I had a hard time reading some of it. Um, and I realize that they can change the site plan. This is currently what they propose. Um, um, it's an administrative process. Uh, it does not show a connection, at least I don't think it shows a connection to Bird, but there is uh, nothing that would prevent <clears throat> this property from having a connection to Bird if it were zoned industrial, light industrial. Is that correct? In the, unless there is a physical feature there that's prohibiting that, that connection, then no, then I would assume that the applicant could make a connection. I'm not, and that is not to say that that is a required connection. So all of these things add up to me are, are a concern. I, uh, when we put commercial or industrial zoning next to single family home zoning, I like there to be some, uh, a, an effective buffer there. This would be hard to make an effective buffer here because the backyards of the houses on Orangewood drop down um, and then 
they begin to rise gently on the other side. So if you were even sure. to put a planted buffer in there, everybody would be able to look right over the top of it. Uh, and much of it, at least at the at that northern end, is fairly clear. It's harder to harder to get access and see how the how the topography performs uh, further south uh, in the property. Uh, without you kind of have to look through the houses. Um, so that's my concern. I would like to have uh, a commitment that there would be no connection to the residential streets. I would like there to be a commitment to uh, a effective and sound buffers in there. And then because there's no development plan, I can't have those things. And for those reasons, I'm going to vote against this rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Just to confirm from earlier that that would be a required 50 foot buffer. A 50 foot buffer for this screen? Point, point 0.8 opacity. Okay, thanks. Any other questions or comments? From commissioners? Let me ask one question. It's, I'm just curious uh, for, the for the developer, uh, since this is near a residential uh, community, were there any objections from members of the community? Mrs. Miller? Ma'am, to my knowledge, our office has not been contacted by any neighbors with any opposition. I'll ask Jacob if he's received any. Uh, Jacob is the planning department. Um, I have not received any phone calls regarding this request. Okay, but the notification went, you know, to those residents. That is correct. And uh, is it not a normal part of your process to hold some sort of meeting with um, members of the community? Not, not for this particular not case, ma'am. Not in this phase. No, ma'am. Okay. Not at this case. No. Okay. Well, but, but it was sent to us. Well, and nobody's objected. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, now you're acting like commissioners. Commissioner Satterfield. Thank you, Chair. Uh, recognizing that what we're looking at in the packet isn't a site development plan, but a theory. Um, what would be uh, taking place in the outdoor aerial park area and the aerial park building? And again, this, you know, that's, there's no guarantee that that's what would end up happening on the site, but presumably some thought went into at least this concept. Commissioner, uh, Chairman, just as a point of order, may I, may I continue mm -hmm. to take the questions um, from the members? I've got a list running and I'll address them all and try to alleviate uh, the concerns you have. And then you can fire back at me again if that if that would be proper or do I need to address each individual if, if it's possible to address the questions as as they come to you that that would be ideal because the, the specific commissioner who has the floor may have a follow-up question that either for you or for staff and okay, so thank you for that clarification I, I um, Ms. Satterfield I'll start with you and and answer your question and then if I may I'll go back to Mr. Miller okay uh, Ms. Satterfield thank you the outdoor aerial park is climbing ropes course um, zip lines, that sort of thing on the outside portion, on the inside portion you have trampolines and activities um, uh, consistent with gymnastics or just recreational fun time. Thank you. You're welcome. And you may ad address any uh, follow-up to Commissioner Miller's statements. Okay. Um, and, and Ms. Hyman, then I'll, I'll come back to yours too. Um, Mr. Miller, on the east side of the property um, there, there is no current connection to Orangewood or Bird. Uh, the, the low lying topography, the, the possibility of stream crossing, the just the simple desire to keep residential on one side of the creek is a wonderful natural boundary from the uh, industrial uses to the west. In addition to that, there's approximately 200 feet of uh, distance between those residential uses and the actual activity portion uh, of the site. So well in excess of the required buffer um, between the residential and the industrial light use. And I, I'm not sure if you had one more question or comment, but I, I hope that that um, alleviates those, those two. Uh, Vice Chair, we, we um, actually have had uh, conversations with our neighbors to the west, which are adjacent to the property line and the access road, and they're in support of this uh, activity. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, follow the proper order. Thank you, sir. That's not a problem. You're, we're making it work. Commissioner Johnson? Um, so I was just curious, and, and I, obviously there's a cost to it or whatnot, but was, is there a reason why a um, site plan was not submitted with the development plan? 
Oh, develop, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, the actual programmatic uh, development plan for this to, to be a, come along with this here, given some of the concerns that have been raised, uh, you know, that would have been a great opportunity to, you know, ward off some of the concerns. Uh, I'll answer your question. We simply were not required to. We're in the process of site planning and annexation and rezoning special use permitting all at the same time. Yeah. So all of those items are going through staff, council, and planning. Mm -hmm. okay. And you do have the, the basic concept, I think, in your packets, which is what is the proposal. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Williams and then Commissioner Gibbs. Um, upon receiving further explanation about the proposed use for this site, um, I can see how it would be beneficial to the community, but I also have concerns with most of these facilities with use inside and outside. Um, uh, first being the amount of noise that it will generate to the neighbors and also the amount of traffic when you have indoor facilities such as these where um, you have indoor soccer, indoor hockey, indoor volleyball that occur in these uh, specific uses. Um, having participated in several of these, I find that the biggest issue is the amount of traffic that's generated and the amount of inadequate parking. And without a proposed development plan, I'm sure that you'll allocate what the UDO says is required as far as parking spaces are concerned, but developing a plan that addresses these issues um, because it's not necessarily secluded for this outdoor recreation. There are neighbors to consider and there's also other impacts because I would assume that this particular recreational development would extend into the later evening hours um, where most people in this area are returning home. And it's also adjacent to I-85 and surrounding neighborhoods. So I have sufficient concerns about the use of this. And though a development plan isn't required, it definitely would have been helpful in determining whether or not this rezoning is adequate. Um, I know there's also no text commitments either. Um, if I may, uh, Commissioner Williams try to address that. So the the couple of things. Um, as noted, no development plan was required, and, and this is not a rezoning. This is an initial designation. Um, the use on the site plan could change if it stays. So the applicant's going to have to go through the minor special use permit process, which is a quasi-judicial hearing. In that hearing in front of the Durham Board of Adjustment, they will have to provide factual evidence that the use and proposal will not have any negative impact on surrounding property owners. Um, okay. Operates very similar to a court proceeding, and that's what the applicant will have. They'll have to provide factual evidence to show that during that, that hearing. That was helpful. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. And I do apologize for misspeaking about the rezoning. Thank you. Commissioner Gibbs? Uh, I've gotten a bit confused. This is a proposed plan for the development of this site, or is this existing uh, on, on this plot plan? Mr. Gibbs, I'm going to hop in and answer that because I don't think Mr. Huffine can see what you're referring to. The, um, you have a site plan in front of you. Um, part of that is existing structure. The northern part is proposed new, assuming the property gets annexed, and the request receives a minor special use permit from the Durham Board of Adjustment. So this layout in this site plan, are, you are familiar with this site plan, right? I may approach. You may, sir. Okay. It's my question is, is this the proposed development plan for that, this site? That's existing. It's a separate parcel and it's going in for annexation. Yeah. And a neutral zone on that. And I refuse to get out three magnifying glasses to try to read it. That's why I'm asking. Okay, what's the new, this is the new part. This part is, is undeveloped and proposed for development. And it's also been described as a new neutral zone. I repeat that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Huffine, if you don't mind actually just, if you could verbally in the microphone just sort of walk through what you were just describing to Commissioner Gibbs just so that we have it for the public record. I think sure. it may be what Mr. Wiggins had just walked through as well, but we'd appreciate that. Sure, thank you. Um, so we discussed the two pieces of property 
The southern piece of property is currently developed with the existing JC Electric building. The northern piece of property is the proposed development area. Both of those properties are being uh, initially applied as the IL zoning as part of the annexation process. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments or questions, Commissioner Miller? I do actually have one. Jacob, you raised a, a good point, um, and it may change my viewpoint on this. Is this, because there's a, an annexation application in, is this rezoning one that, I mean, the staff report describes Mr. Huffine as the applicant. Is he the applicant, or is this a, a city initial rezoning? Is the city the applicant? Is he paid a fee? He has paid an annexation fee. The zoning application, hyper-technically, the city is the applicant for the initial zoning designation. So if the city is the applicant, there can't be a development plan because the city can't impose a development plan on a property owner. Is that correct? That would be correct. All right. That does change my view, and I'll vote for this. Great. Thank you. I think at this point it's appropriate for a motion. I will accept a motion. Mr. Chairman. I'm Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, I move that we uh, send case Z184A uh, forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. I'll second, sign. Okay. Properly moved and seconded. I think Vice Chair Hyman got in first with the second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any in opposition? Motion carries 14 to 0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. The final official item on tonight's agenda is reviewing the fiscal year 19 work plan. We'll start with the staff report and a microphone adjustment. Wiggins. Sorry, old lady with arthritis. Uh, can't not the first time this, and it's just like an email. May this be the hardest part of your presentation. <laughs> I just have really strong muscles. Let's note that for the record, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sarah Young with the Durham City County Planning Department. Um, the item before you tonight is the annual proposal for the department's work program. This would be for the fiscal year that begins July 1 and runs through June 30th of 2019. And as most of you that have been here for a while know, the interlocal agreement that created the planning department between the city and the county requires that every year we submit to the Joint City County Planning Committee, the Planning Commission, and both governing bodies our proposed work program for the coming fiscal year. So this year I want to run through, as I always do, kind of the highlights and remind you a little bit of how the work that we, the department does is structured. And basically we do three types of things in the department. We do ongoing legally required items like you know, process rezonings and process site plans and board of adjustment cases and certificates of appropriateness and all those things. We also have ongoing processes that are basically mandated by city, county, or departmental policy. For instance, uh, the vast majority of our customer service functions, right? We don't have to be nice to people and kind of hold their hand and walk them through the process, but by policy we elect to do so. So that's an example. We always get questions like, what do you mean by that? That's what I mean by that. There's a lot of things that we don't legally have to do, um, but if we want to be any sort of quality department, we absolutely have to do, and that's what those things are. And then the third group of items are really where the discretion comes along, and those are our, typically our long-range planning projects. Um, and that's part of what I want to talk to you about tonight. So in the memo that was in your packet on page two, it highlights basically four substantial projects that are new being proposed to be added to the work program for next year. Um, the first is a project called Expanding Housing Choice. And the, the purpose of this project is really to look at other, it's, as opposed to the recent project for an interim affordable housing bonus or any future project um, for more permanent affordable housing bonuses associated with our compact neighborhoods or other special areas. This is a broad-based look through the entire ordinance to look at ways that we can streamline, make easier, incentivize, encourage more affordable housing throughout the community. And I say affordable housing, not capital affordable housing, but just 
housing that is less expensive, okay? So just, just to note that difference. Um, we hear from our customers all the time that are trying to do innovative things, that there's some obstacle in the ordinance that's keeping them from being able to develop a property, you know, in a certain way um, in terms of making a uh, market affordable unit occur. And so this project is aimed at looking, scouring the entire ordinance, looking for opportunities. The next item is called 9th Street West Compact Design District Edition. And for those of you that were here, you will remember that when we came through a couple years ago now with the compact neighborhoods and the design district, the future land use changes for all of the station areas, the Irwin station area had a piece that really was separated from the station area proper and really was contiguous with the 9th Street existing compact design district. So we are proposing, because that is kind of self-contained and relatively easy, you're just adding to an existing district as opposed to trying to um, you know, revamp new standards and put something in place in a completely new area. Um, we're proposing a standalone project to handle that kind of mini compact neighborhood addition there. And then probably the biggest item uh, is the third bullet on page two of the memo, which is a brand new comprehensive plan. Yes, the cheering to make amends. Um, we are very excited that our outdated 2005 comprehensive plan um, will soon be replaced, hopefully, with a new up-to-date one that really reflects kind of where we are now as a community. You know, in, in 2005, things were very different than they are now. Um, we, our comprehensive plan did a lot of good things, progressive things in terms of um, transportation planning. Um, it did a lot of good things in terms of environmental planning. But it was really, really shy and very poor, really, in terms of infrastructure capacity planning um, and, and doing a lot of the, the deeper look at what it actually costs and takes to make development happen throughout the community and where is it appropriate versus not appropriate. You will see in most comprehensive plans in other places that it's very clear where we want growth to go. If you open our comprehensive plan, you will find that nowhere. The current comprehensive plan is a group of policies and homework assignments for the staff, and it really does not set out a vision for how and where and when we will grow. So we're very much looking forward to that. We expect that to be about a three-year endeavor, more or less, with a lot of public involvement um, and a lot of staff time, which is why if you were to compare our proposed FY19 plan against some prior work programs, you will see that there are less projects on it because this is really going to take a lot of staff time. So um, putting that out there, that's, it's going to really limit our ability to take on a whole lot of other things. The last thing under the discretionary long-range projects is the industrial land study update. Uh, the industrial land study um, was last touched, I think, in 2013. And there has been a lot of change in market conditions, particularly in some of the areas um, that were previously thought of as potentially prime industrial, that in reality may or may not be. Um, we need a fresh look at this. There was kind of limited analysis done at the time, and we have um, better methods and techniques to kind of discern what might be actual prime industrial now. So we would like to take a look at that again. So that's it for the long range projects. There are some process improvement related type projects that are listed that start at the bottom of page two and I'll quickly run through them. These are initiatives out of our Development Services Center. As you know, the Development Services Center launched this year and it has a very long laundry list of things it wants to accomplish. Um, they are talking about creating a new optional pre-submittal type meeting for folks. You know, pre-submittal meetings are required for a lot of our processes but they're not for many things, and people really benefit from the ability to get together staff from various departments to deal with issues before they submit. So getting, being able to assemble a cross-departmental team is no small feat, and so we're trying to put in place another process to be able to do that for folks where it's not strictly required. Then there is, on the top of page three, zoning permits. And zoning permits are a little bit of a hybrid of some of the exercises that we currently do at the Development Services Center as part of our basic uh, customer service functions, looking up people's zoning, verifying whether there's any outstanding violations on a property. Um, people come to us all the time trying to do due diligence and 
do their homework basically on what they can and can't do on a property and what may be hanging out there that they need to be aware of as they try and plan what they want to do with a piece of property. But there are a lot of instances where smaller projects, uh, things can fall through the cracks. Uh, particularly, there's a lot of single family development, you know, it doesn't require a site plan, uh, but there's still a lot of things that come into play. And so we're trying to have a unified place where people can come, get kind of all the boxes checked. Hey, I looked at this, I looked at this, I looked at this. I'm good to go with whatever my proposed development is. It's kind of a quick, high level vetting of a piece of property for a potential applicant. And then the last thing is the small cell wireless permits. There was some changes in state law that uh, precipitated this particular uh, proposal, um, but basically we have a, a new mandate to process these small wireless permits, um, including a fee graciously um, affordably set for us by the General Assembly. Mm. Um, but so we need a process to handle this and that's, that's what that is. Um, a lot of this work is also coming um, with a request for additional staffing. Um, so just be aware that the memo says that we're, um, this work program represents 46 full-time equivalent positions. And if we do not get the full allocation of the additional positions that we're requesting, then the work program will have to shrink accordingly. So that's kind of my disclaimer. What you see may not be what you get. We'll see what happens. So I'm glad to answer any questions. I know I rushed through that, um, but I know you guys probably would like to get home. So happy to take any questions. Great, thank you very much. I know we have a, we have, get comfortable. We have a set of questions. Uh, one question just that I had before we get to the, the other commissioners. So what is the current FTE for the department? We are currently at 44. So we're asking for two positions. Great, okay. And, and it you- It doesn't sound like a lot, it's a lot. No, it's a lot. Great, thank you. Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Ghosh. Thank you. Um, Sarah, I had a question about the zoning permits. Well, a couple questions. Um, are, is this something that would only be required for projects like single family that don't require a site plan? Mostly, however, people could use them um, to check on other things. And I don't have the full detail with me of what all would be covered under a zoning permit, but it would primarily be single family. There would probably be other small scale things that would be covered under this as well. Uh, okay. Basically, something that doesn't need some other type of entitlement, like a site plan or whatever. Yeah, okay. we have a handful yeah, yeah, yeah. of those things. You know, for instance, fences. Right? We have fence standards in the UDO. Right. But we don't have fence permit. You know, other places have fence permits. You got to get a permit to put your fence because we need to verify that you put it up at the right height. And we deal with it on a complaint and violation basis here. So, stuff like that that's in the ordinance that doesn't necessarily have another process that covers it would probably be covered by this. Okay, and then uh, this high level vetting of the of the whatever proposal may be of the property is this like a on the ground like an inspector goes out there and says no so this is uh, basically exhausting every in-house resource that we have you know we cross we would cross check um you know are there streams on the property would you be subject to a stream buffer okay. are there you know things that particularly that the average homeowner may not be aware of or that the average you know, um, small entrepreneur that's starting a little business or something on a piece of property may not necessarily be aware of. So it's a way to kind of tie a bunch of things together um, for folks that don't necessarily know where to look. So my, my thought process is I'm, I'm a little unclear on what the, I get why it's important to check this, but how is it going to affect, the, let's say, the person who doesn't need a site plan is building a single family home and they do the zoning permit thing and they say, oh, there's a stream, there's gonna be a buffer. How does this affect that person's ability to build the house? Right, so currently there are some things that are zoning permit material that are being kind of ad hoc checked um, in other venues. So you come in for a building permit, for instance, from the inspections department to build your house. So by law, building inspectors and plans examiners, they only look at the building code. Okay. Guess what? We have setback requirements, right? If we're I if you're in the watershed protection overlay, there's an impervious surface limit. Right. Well, that's not their purview. They don't, you know, they they. Um, it has been, like I said, kind of ad hoc whether those items really got checked or not, how thoroughly, how often. Oh, okay. So we're trying to kind of tie all the pieces together for folks. So, so the way it works now is 
basically it's like hopefully someone check this hopefully and this is meant to say well we're going to make we sure we check checking it. checking it exactly okay that that's helpful now and then the other thing is just a anecdote and i'm from city of raleigh where i've done some work and it was related to a zoning permit although it sounds like a slightly different item so i don't know where in the sequence of approvals or reviews this zoning permit is intended but what happened in raleigh was the site got a CO, but did not get a zoning permit. And then it was found out later that in fact, there wasn't enough screening for ground mounted mechanicals in this case. And which is, which created an odd scenario. I mean, there's already people living in this apartment and they're getting, uh, the, uh, the property owner was getting, you know, uh, NOVs related to the not having enough screening. And, uh, and you know, it was all, also, too late to provide the additional screening. So anyway, the, the, the point is, you know, I don't know how, where in the process this is, but you know, like I would encourage there to be some sort of checks and balances. So if this is something that's gonna be required, it's required at the appropriate steps so that it doesn't, so that you don't get a CO before a zoning permit and then have this retroactive problem. And the beauty is that the inspections department, as you know, is one of our partner development services department. Yeah. In fact, they are physically located in development services with us. So we are, feel fairly confident that that coordination piece will be able to be handled. I'll say it happened in Raleigh, not Durham. So I have full confidence that Durham will be able to handle it. Those Raleigh guys, you never know, man. <laughs> we make different mistakes. Than that. Okay. Commissioner Bryan. Thank you. I have a couple of quick questions. On the Part B, uh, page 19 of 27, uh, item 5.2.8, does that include food trucks? That, that is what it, it, yeah. Okay. So it's like carts, like the hot dog man cart, it's food trucks, it's. Okay, that's, that's and then on page 22, uh, item 5.3.7, uh, I will admit to being very ignorant. I don't know what you mean by C-L-O-M-R. Clumber. Clumber. It's, uh, <clears throat> what is it? Something letter of map revision. What is the C? Certified. Certified letter of map revision. So these are changes to the flood maps. Okay. Yep. Uh, I just think that at some point in this thing, the first time you make reference to it, you might want to spell it out so ignorant people like me know what you're talking about. <laughs> Noted. Uh, <laughs> and uh, on the high priority projects, uh, attachment three, on the Austin Avenue Compact Design District, do we still have industrial zoning in that compact Currently, yes. Okay, I'm I'm still confused about, I don't want to get into it a lot tonight, but I'm still confused about how that's going to fit into a compact district. It's already uh, in a compact. No, but, yeah, I know, but when you start looking at, at, you know, making things more dense, if you still, if dear old Armageddon Chemical Company is still in there, you're not going to want to have stuff that close to it. Well, that's why it's proposed to change to design so, district. Well, what are you going to do with the industrial stuff that's there? It's there. I mean, you know. So I, I would say that in that area, we have a lot of, we have very little of the um, noxious kind of heavy nuisance. We have a variety of metal scrap yards. We have a lot of um, auto. We have a lot of auto repair. <laughs> a lot. If y'all need a car fixed, I can tell you where to go. Up and she down wasn't here when ta when Armageddon oh. poured the toluene in the, in the storm drains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we have very few of the kind of large yeah. kind of plant operations. Okay, uh, and then uh, if during the next fiscal year we were to receive notification that we're not going to get any federal money at all for the proposed Orange Durham rail line, do the priorities of items one to four go down? That would be something that would have to be reevaluated. I will tell you that that third attachment um, is just kind of the future wish list. For right now, it's the parking lot. 
No, I understand that. I'm just so trying we, to refine would, the parking lot. Yeah, we would reevaluate that. Okay. That we still, and part of it, I think, would come out of the comp plan, regardless of light rail or no light rail, right? The community is going to continue to grow. Where are those people going to go? How are mm -hmm. we going to accommodate them? Um, I think those are still valid questions, and whether we have concentrated areas like these compact neighborhoods um, where we, you know, incentivize kind of densification in specific areas, that's a question for the comp plan, and I think a lot of that will be resolved there. Okay. Um, item seven on this list, the land use plan update for Burdens Creek, NC55, at South Austin Avenue. I'm inclined to believe you'd be wasting your time, effort, and money to do anything down there. Your window of opportunity is gone. Uh, and my final question on the Durham Technical Community College area, especially investigating a potential zoning map change, are you talking about both campuses? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Bryan. Commissioner Hyman? Yes, uh, I am very excited to see the comprehensive plan, you know, at least make it to the work plan. But I, my question is similar to uh, Commissioner Brines. Um, is it contingent upon the addition of the staff? One question. And the second part would be, um, will this proceed with an outside consulting group or uh, which would, you know, which would make more sense if it's going to to go through the community and be directed by the planning department. So where are we with that? So great questions. Um, one, the two positions are not for the comprehensive plan. Okay. We are gearing up to kind of read, and that's if you were to compare this work program against our current year work program, you will see that a lot of things have dropped off of it. Okay. And have been stuck either back on the kind of hold parking lot list or have been, or are slated to be completed by the end of this fiscal year. So it is anticipated that the majority of the work on the actual drafting of that plan will happen in-house with existing staff from the policy and urban design team, okay. which is the, you know, Scott Whiteman, Lisa Miller, Hannah Jacobson, Matt Filter, Mike Stock, the, the, those folks, um, with additional resources from the rest of the department. We have requested uh, through the budget proposal to have funding for a consultant to do a fairly robust public engagement event um, throughout the comprehensive plan process. Um, that is not to say that um, staff doesn't want to do it or is incapable of doing it, um, but we are trying to kind of get the most bang for our buck. We want to reach more people and engage more folks um, differently than we've been able to just with our own resources. If we do not get that funding, we are still doing the comp plan. It will probably be a more limited comp plan in scope so that we can kind of divide the resources that we have and still do a decent job, maybe not a great Cadillac version job of public engagement that we would like to do, um, but we still need to do a good job of public engagement. But it will just mean that the scope of the comprehensive plan is a little thinner and leaner. Thank you. Commissioner Miller. So I'm actually thrilled about the zoning permits idea. Everybody does it but Durham. It's even contemplated in the statutes, and we don't do it. Uh, I do have a question about what it effect will have on um, vesting. In other words, if I come and I get a zoning permit, am I, does a clock start running so that if a, the, the rules are changed, I can act on my permit? Or have you thought it through that far? I don't think we've thought it through that far, to be honest. That's fine. I realize all this is coming back. This, this is a list. Um, uh, and I'm also thrilled about the comp plan. Um, I want to know what's waiting from neighborhoods. I heard recently that there's a neighborhood out there that's actually working on a new historic district. Is that so? Not to, not to my knowledge. Okay, I think there is one. Uh, but I can't tell you anything about it other than that's what I heard. Um, what about another NPO? Is there a neighborhood out there in the queue? Not officially. We have heard rumblings of other neighborhoods exploring um, the NPO as a possibility, but again, nothing has come in officially. We, um, I don't even think we've had any official meetings with anyone about it. It's just okay. You're so that's why it doesn't show in the plan. Very good. Um, I would like to see. Uh, I mean, I, I, we've got the the community section. I think that's great. The zoning course is great. I realize that 
that we uh, lost our professor, and but we have a new professor. Who taught the one that was just done? Uh, Matt Filter. Okay, Matt did it. Um, I would like to see that course beefed up and made better and offered more frequently. Uh, so I think that's great. I would also like there to be a, uh, a designated liaison uh, from the staff to the Interneighborhood Council um, and not necessarily attend every meeting but have some sort of uh, connection and communication so that there can be some some pro programming and Im improved communication. We have the this body that's been around now since, gosh, 1985. Um, I think we could exploit it better. I would love to see that as a line item in the work plan. Uh, I will say that with regard to your uh, the issue section in the in the memo, and I, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. But this whole idea of the missing middle, I find that laughable as a, an affordable housing idea. I mean, it, the whole concept and the term was created uh, in order to address what its uh, originator uh, deemed to be uh, as a housing need for people who were downsizing because of the aging of baby boomers. And it was actually a way to maximize uh, uh, housing profits from that segment of the housing market. Uh, and so when I see it used as an affordable housing tool, I always kind of chuckle. Uh, I personally don't think the economics are there. You cannot liberalize the zoning code into affordable housing. Prices in housing go down when there are national calamities or local calamities, national calamities being um, uh, recessions, local calamities are Detroit. Uh, other than that, I don't think a local zoning code can affect a national housing market in the way it responds to demand. And demand is supply, it comes from people who have improved incomes and can pay for housing. Uh, I think sometimes in Durham we have a tendency to confuse demand with need. Uh, supply does not respond to need. We have that demonstrated here constantly. Uh, and that, but uh, it is a, but we should, we should do something about need, but I don't think you can do it with the zoning code. Uh, I think this is a, a really nice uh, layout of, of these issues, and I like the opportunity to talk about it rather than just watch a slideshow, so thank you. Commissioner Williams. Um, I'm particularly excited about the changes of trying to streamline the UDO and make it more flexible to those that are actually trying to use it to better the opportunities for development, whether it's for affordable housing or if it's just for actually upgrading properties, because there are certain hurdles that developers and contractors face now that if they were eliminated, would make it easily accessible for people to change their properties and without having the issues that we've had with some of the proposed boundaries that have been put in place for MPOs, which make MPOs actually more of a tool for existing residents and even for future residents. So I think the process of getting to the point where we can make the zoning more fine-tuned and relax some restrictions that developers may have, it makes it more attractive even for using existing properties. So I'm definitely excited about um, moving that forward and trying to help in any way possible and as much input as we possibly can give to develop these standards and help the UDO be less cluttered, but definitely more of a functional tool and better understood by the residents because people don't know until they get a fine and that's unfortunate. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gibbs. Uh, I would, in, in looking through this, is this speaker on? Mm -hmm. Anyway, in looking through the, the, the list of things, uh, when I ran across Missing Middle, I was uh, kind of excited because I think this is uh, one of the tools that could be used uh, for density without taking up so much footprint or ground space, uh, just one of the tools, but this is not, which we all know, 
is not uh, a new concept. It's been done, oh, I, New Orleans, Georgetown, uh, just everywhere. But it's, I really do think it's a, it's a good concept to, and it has an application. So I, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, I'm not trying to start an argument with Commissioner Tom. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's right, just. I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And just for folks who are still, if you haven't still haven't found anything to watch on TV, when it gets late, we get giddy. Uh, we're ready to go home, right? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Al Turk. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks, Sarah, for this presentation. I, I guess I'm. I'd like to follow up on Commissioner Miller's last point, which is, I, I sounds like a great work plan. Um, and then, especially thinking about these big issues, like the two that stand out to me are the expanding housing choice and the comprehensive plan. And I guess you just my, my, and I can't speak for all commissioners, but for me personally, I would love to be involved in some of the processes that are a little bit, you know, as things are, Propose or as things are, as discussions are being had by planning staff. Um, so I'm not sure if there are ways to, to do that or kind of to, to make that more part of our work. Um, and again, maybe that's something that we commissioners need to decide whether we want that as a body or not. But I, I personally would, would like that. And I would, I would just like to propose that to the staff. Yeah, I will say that uh, we are happy to have y'all's input um, on anything that you want to participate in. Um, I know in the past we have had commissioners come to uh, public meetings and workshops that we've had with the public on various projects and both kind of observe and hear what people were saying and themselves kind of participate. So we are more than happy to do that. I will say certainly I expect that the comprehensive plan um, and the hopeful, anticipated level of engagement that we plan to have. I think there will be more than ample opportunities, but um, any project that we work on, we welcome y'all's input and participation. I think it's also good for the community to see you all um, participating with them at events. And so we'll make sure to pass along every time that we have um, any opportunity. We, you know, we're doing a variety of things. We do traditional workshops, um, public meetings, um, open house style meetings. We do focus groups. Um, it may be good to have some of you serve on some of our focus groups. Um, if you don't feel comfortable participating, at least observing and being able to take that back to the group. Um, so we're happy to, if you have particular specific ideas of how you want to be involved, please send those to me. We're happy to accommodate that. Absolutely. Thank you. Because I, I don't think I am aware of those workshops and meetings that you have. So, I mean, I, I know they're publicly um, available, but I, I, I'm not aware of them usually. Um, so that would be great. Um, and I would also just, the, my second part of that was that maybe some of our, I mean, if, and I, I get that we want to be efficient with our time, but if, if there are things that we can discuss as a group in, in this meeting, in this space, I, I'm, I'm open to that as well, but I, I will leave that to others as well. Thank you, Commissioner. And actually, you, you raised the point that I was going to mention as well. I think knowing that this is going to be a, a three-year process and it's supposed to be deliberate, having the public hearings and opportunities for us to be engaged in those type of events makes a lot of sense. And I think it'll be important for us to help spread the word to make sure that our, the citizens of Durham know about it and can be engaged. But it does seem like we as a working body will be available and could be helpful. I don't have an idea yet or a proposal on how that might be the case, but it does seem like as it moves forward, this is a place where we could be a sounding board. We could certainly help uh, think through as a body some of those options, especially when we have meetings like next month where it sounds like we have one agenda item. We'll have months like that where we may be able to utilize our time and, and offer our input in a way that may help advance some of the, the public meetings and other events as well. So. I'd be interested at some point, I, I know the staff has so much free time, but it would actually fall under this work plan of a comprehensive plan. It'd be interesting to find out have other communities engage the planning commission beyond just we show up with the public, but is there a way that we can be engaged as a deliberative body? And I think that's what I hear you saying as well. Uh, and I see a lot of heads nodding. I think we'd be interested in exploring 
how we could do that and how we could be helpful. Commissioner Miller? So uh, just to point out an example, although I was not sitting as a commission member uh, last month when this body considered the Old West Durham uh, neighborhood protection overlay change, I was struck by what Mr. Bryan had said uh, after the vote was is that the Planning Commission, uh, in connection with the uh, consideration for the Tuscaloosa Lakewood uh, NPO, had actually actually been given, before the public hearing, had been given a kind of a, a briefing somewhere in the process as it was being developed, rather than just seeing it for the first time. Uh, I was struck by the fact that I believe that the quality of this body's uh, uh, deliberation on the uh, Old West Durham NPO uh, would have been improved had there been some sort of opportunity that wasn't divided between proponents and opponents where there was real engagement about how, how it was going to work. Um, and as we do some of these other things in here, like look at these special project things, I would like to have briefings uh, along the way added to our agenda. We meet every month. Um, I'm retired. I actually do this for fun. Um, and uh, the, uh, but it does matter. And I sometimes feel like when, especially when big projects where a lot of, where staff has devoted a lot of time, when you, when we, we come in at the end and vote, I feel like, gosh, I would have liked to have steered this a little earlier so that we're not throwing out everything simply because I might have been able to shape it or be involved. So adding a briefings at the appropriate stage in development to our agenda on these, these six or seven projects that you've identified here, especially like design district changes, and um, I would love that uh, so that when it came uh, and we deliberated and we voted that I didn't feel like I had to get it all out of a staff report, especially one that was this thick, uh, that we had been brought along with the project. This is tough stuff. Uh, you guys are in, in the trenches. Uh, you are intensely familiar with issues because you're developing them. As they happen, uh, they get dumped on our plate uh, at the end, and I'm not sure that we have the nuanced understanding of how things got to where they were, and sometimes I worry about making wrong decisions because I don't get it. I would like to spend more time along the way on the big projects, uh, especially those where there's a lot of community engagement and intensity of community feeling. If I'm going to vote against something that somebody in the community wants, I want it to be a thoughtful decision rather than a mistake. Any, any staff response? And then I think we'll have a motion on this item. Yeah, I was going to say that um, we're happy to do that. We actually used to do that more, and I'm not 100% sure why we've kind of fallen off the bandwagon. Um, but we, our practice used to be to try and bring large projects here kind of mid-ish way through and give you all a preview so A, you weren't surprised, B, you could you know, if there was further stuff that needed to be looked at, if there was insight that you could give us early on um, that would aid the project. Um, so I will have a chat with my folks and we'll see if we can get back into that good habit. That's wonderful. Commissioner Satterfield. Thank you. Um, I was just going to lend another voice of support for that concept. I think it'd be great. I think we would end up with a lot more positive outcomes. Great. This is, this is a really great plan. I will be ready to approve it once there is a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we send uh, the fiscal year 19, uh, 2019 work plan uh, forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. However, I would like to um, uh, add to it that uh, we get a line item in there about a liaison with the Internet Group Council. Yeah, include the county also. It does. Okay. I'm sorry. I, to the governing bodies. There's a motion. I have not heard a second. 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 All right. <clears throat> Properly motioned by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Bryan. Staff, did you capture the motion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That is a unanimous approval.
before we adjourn, I know that uh, Ms. Smith wanted to just talk to us briefly about the Planning Commission training, and uh, I did have one or two quick additional updates as well. Okay, so um, just wanted to make sure everyone knew that we will have the training on April 26th. We have confirmed it. You will be receiving an Outlook invite. April what? On April 26th. It's the... I think the only person I had that responded that they cannot attend is Mr. Bryan. What time? Um, everyone else, with the exception of maybe one or two of you, have responded. So What time? From 9 to 12. And so I will send a, an Outlook invite so you can add it into your calendars. And um, that was really all I had to share other than the one item will come back next month for your review. Great. And where will it take place? So it, it will be where we were last year? It will. The, all of the details will be in the Outlook invite. So it's going to be the same room in the planning department. Um, everything will be the same, but I'll make sure all of that's in the um, email too. Great. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be Thursday, April 26th mm -hmm. from 9 a.m. until noon. It'll be in this building but on the ground floor. And as usual, there will be parking passes available for yes. parking. Uh, I would advise you the lot across the street is often full by 9 a.m. So get here early or just be ready to walk a couple of blocks. <laughs> it's a very popular spot. Take the bull seated. So, and, and we are not providing lunch. So uh, just letting you know, but we will have you out in time to go to lunch. Uh, we may have some like very, very light I'll bring refreshments, donuts. but we're not having lunch. So I live in the donut part of town. I'll bring, bring some donuts. That'll be great. Perfect. And, and David Owen from the School of Government is joining us. Yes, right? he is. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you for setting that up. Yes, no, no problem. So just be on the lookout. To, uh, probably tomorrow afternoon sometime you'll receive an, an official invite to put on your calendars. And um, that was really all I had. Great. I just wanted to say, I, I, I know it's a small thing, but I appreciate the pictures that are in the staff reports now. That, that's new, and I noticed that, that was new. consistent. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. It yeah. just adds a little. I know we all drive out and check things out, mm -hmm. but it's nice, I think, from the public's perspective. It gives a lot more context, so keep that up. Sure, because the staff reports are posted on the website, so a lot of people read the staff reports in addition to the commissioners. Um, and we may change the format a little bit here and there over the next month or two. We're kind of tweaking exactly how we want to do this. So if you have any feedback, let us know. But um, we we think we've got it down to like where we like it. There might just be some minor changes. I will say I would like to have the PDR density figure shown on the context zoning context maps. So we have a range, so you don't prefer the range, you want that? No, I would prefer the actual density figure. Okay, we'll have so to much fighting is done around between four and eight. <clears throat> it, it helps to know. If you can do it, if you can't, you we'll, can't. We'll Just look into that. Um, you know, there's, the devil's always in the details. and it's, I realize. It, if, you can, if you can't do it, you can't do it. Assuming, but we'll definitely see what we can do about that. Okay. Anything else? This meeting's adjourned. Okay. Thank you. Thing. It was. It oh, was. yeah. I thought it was. I yeah. thought it started off with a little thin, but it got better. Oh, I, got better. I, I, I was concerned. I just, I was going to get the whole thing.